Hello, and welcome back to Batty Corvette Repair. My name is Brian Thompson. Today we're gonna to be troubleshooting this 1984 instrument panel. The LCDs have segments that are missing. And sure enough, when we plug it into our test harness, we see some missing segments in the center panel. One of the things that I'd like to point out is that the cluster does a lamp test on its own every time you turn on the key. So what I'm going to do is turn off the key. I'm gonna wait a few seconds for the instrument panel to clear, and I'm gonna turn the key back on. What we see the cluster doing during this first two seconds is it turns on every single segment on every single LCD panel. It's also running those light bulbs at full brightness. So if you see anything other than that, there's a problem with the computer turning those, those light bulbs or those segments on. And what we see is a missing segment here. We see some missing segments down here in the reserve slash trip meter panel. Everything looks okay in the coolant and volts. In the average instant panel, we see missing segments again. If we look at the speedometer, it looks good. If we look at the tachometer, again, it looks good. All of the segments can be turned on and all of those are bright so that we know the bulbs are illuminated. So let's go ahead and take this apart and find out why these segments might not be illuminated. We've removed the, the cluster back. We've removed the odometer so that we can access the bottom board. We've removed the top board and we've set it aside. I saw no issues with that. Things that can cause segments not to work. These eight 40 pin ICs are LCD driver ICs. These can fail causing um, segments to not turn on and off. They usually don't fail one at a time. They usually fail in chunks of the, the whole uh, IC stops working at once. We don't see any instances where large blocks of those segments aren't working, just a few here and there. So I don't think that's gonna be the problem. The next thing that can cause problems is dirt on these contacts. When I look at this, Chad's done a great job of cleaning these before he put it back together. I see no paint chips. I see um, no debris that would cause this segment or the few segments that we saw not working to not work. So we're gonna set this top board aside. We'll move on to the next thing that can go wrong and that is dirt on these pink rubber blocks. Careful examination of these blocks. I don't see debris on, on the Maybe I do, okay. I just I just brushed a little bit of debris away from one of those pink rubber blocks. I see a little bit more here, so it is entirely possible that we don't have these pink rubber blocks clean enough to conduct the small amount of electricity that it takes to turn on the LCD segments. The way that I clean these, uh, I've got a couple of methods. If they are really dirty, I will take them and dunk them in dish soap with hot water and Dawn dishwashing soap. I'll let them soak for about five minutes and then I will uh, let them dry on a paper towel before I reassemble. If everything looks good, I will use some compressed air in a compressed air can to clean both ends of all of these blocks and then I'll reassemble it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the center light diffuser and let's look at the other side of those blocks because I am curious what's going on here. I see a hair. That could certainly be a reason that uh, some of those segments were not working. So we're just gonna pull those six out and we're gonna clean those up. I'll put them all together and look at them. There's a little bit of debris that might be causing this problem. It's tough to tell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tear this down. I definitely see some debris here. I know that we didn't have any problems on the speedometer side, but uh, we've got, definitely got some debris on this. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna clean these a little bit. Let's see if we can get it working again. I'll set the light diffusers aside. And the reason that I wanna, I wanna look at these panels is I just wanna see, okay, we do see a broken piece of plastic. We're gonna get that out of our way. The customer has not replaced the LCD, the polarizing film on these. With non-working segments, another thing that I would check is to be sure that the polarizing film is trimmed flush with all four edges of the panel. If the polarizing film sticks proud of the glass and any one of these sides, it can cause these electrical contacts to not align properly 
and that can cause segments to not work. I'm also seeing some dirt on on the glass surface. I don't know that that was, that obviously there were no problems with the speedometer, but we're gonna go ahead and clean everything up before we put it back together just to make sure that we get it the best chance possible. I see no, uh, I see no cracks in these panels. It actually does look like the polarizing film has been replaced on this panel. We can see an uneven edge there at the bottom. Polarizing film is not proud of the LCD, so I think it's okay. We're just gonna set these aside. The next thing we're looking for is, do we have dirt and debris in the case? And the answer is yes. Uh, and the way we're gonna get rid of that is we're gonna turn it upside down. We're going to tap it on the ground. We can see quite a bit of this debris falling away. We'll use some compressed air. Clean out as much dust as we can. We'll remove these rubber blocks so that we can reassemble everything. We're gonna start by cleaning the electrical contacts on these LCD panels. The electrical contacts are nothing more than some conductive paint painted onto the surface of this glass. We're not going to scrub very hard. We're just going to take a Q-tip. We're gonna dip it in, I'm using 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I'll go over each of the contacts once or twice. We got quite a bit of dirt off of that. This also gets rid of any fingerprint oil, bugs, any other contaminants that we might have on there. Finally, we're going to use a dry Q-tip and we're just gonna wipe those surfaces again to make sure we don't have any alcohol left on that panel. We'll do the same thing here. We're going to wipe the surfaces with an alcohol Q-tip. We're gonna wipe the surfaces with a dry Q-tip. We're gonna set that aside and let it dry. Definitely when you're working with these panels, don't let them hit each other. Uh, two panels sliding into each other just very slightly can cause both to crack. Replacement panels are available, but they're very expensive, so we don't want to do that. Again, we're gonna use the alcohol Q-tip. And at the end of those three panels, it's got some debris on there. They weren't clean. Now we'll use a dry Q-tip. And we'll just set that aside and let it dry as well. Normally, I would use some Windex and a paper towel and clean the front surface of these panels. Somebody's already done a great job of that. We don't need to. So finally, what we're going to do is, uh, especially if this is an 84 or 85, we're going to look at the edges of these panels. The factory has applied some black paint to the edges of these panels. But what we see here is that that paint is starting to chip off. And because that paint's starting to chip off, it might contaminate our panel. I'm using a uh, brass, a well-worn brass bristle brush, and I'm just gonna knock off any loose paint. I don't wanna knock off this seal here. That's what holds in the liquid crystal material. But uh, I do want to knock off any loose paint chips. And again, we'll see more loose paint chips here and how easily those come off with a light brass brush. We're going to do the same thing with the center panel. We're going to do the same thing with our tack panel. We see how easily that paint comes off. We can see it all over my hand. We can see that black paint chips all over the bench. We definitely don't want that in our project. We've got everything contaminated with black paint. We're gonna clean that up before we reassemble. Next, we're gonna place the LCD panels into the plastic housing and we're going to install rubber blocks on the top side and the right side of that speedometer panel. We're gonna take the center panel, we're going to slide it beside this metal leaf spring. We're gonna let it drop down. Okay, so that it's sitting flush in the plastic housing. 
We've got uh, all of the LCD panels setting flat on the plastic housing. We see the evil plastic tabs that can smash the edges of these panels. The panel is not sitting on top of any one of those. There are three on the speedometer. There are three on the center panel. And there are three on the tachometer panel. And we see that the these panels are not sitting on top of any one of those. So next we're gonna dust those panels again. I'm gonna use a paper towel and this lens cleaner sprayed onto the paper towel to wipe any fingerprints off the back side of these panels. I'll dust it one final time. I'll dust the color filter. And we'll install the color filter onto the three pins in the case. Those are located here, here, and here. Next, we'll clean up the back side of that color filter panel. And we'll install our light diffusers. Again, we're gonna clean our we're gonna clean our light diffusers. We'll put that in place. We'll put on the plastic tray that holds our elastomeric connectors. We'll do the same thing with our tack panel. We'll do the same thing with our speedo panel. Next, we'll take and stack all of the short elastomeric connectors. There are six of them. We're just gonna clean the ends of those. Once they're nice and clean, we're gonna look at each of the four ends. What we're looking for is a very slight hook shape. All right, and I see the hook shape is on this, this one right here. The hook is pointed up. We're going to install it such that the hook is up and the hook is in that location right there. The rest of these can be installed in any orientation that you want. One thing that I try to do is make sure that they are floating freely in these plastic trays. If they're not, just try rearranging them. We're gonna do the same thing with our long connectors. We're gonna look at each of the four ends here, 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 and here. And we're looking for two of these with distinctive hook shapes to them. These are harder to see, but I've found one here. The hook is on this end. I'm going to put the hook pointed down and on this end of the tray. The second hook is located here and I'm going to point it down and oriented so that the hook is in that end. Next, I'm going to look at these, uh, the ends of these connectors. And I'm looking for the four of these that are the flattest. I know that in certain locations, and those lo locations are here, 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 and here, that only the thinnest of these rubber blocks will fit. So I'm looking for the thin rubber blocks and I'm going to put them in those locations. Again, these blocks should slide freely into those trays. We have four that are left over that are not so thin. These can usually go in any of the other locations. Okay, everything fit, everything is uh, floating freely. Everything is clean. I'm gonna give it one final cleaning. I'm gonna do the same thing for this board.
and I'm going to reassemble. We reassembled everything. When we test it, we still see that the same several segments here, here, and here are missing. Unfortunately, sometimes um, the answer is that the, the defective part is the LCD panel. I don't see any physical damage to this panel, so I, I don't think that the user has punched it or done something to cause it to not work. I think it's it's just, what is it, 30, 37 years old at this point, and it's not working anymore. Uh, fortunately, there are replacement LCD panels available. You're going to need a new center panel. That completes troubleshooting for this 84 Corvette instrument panel. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Brian Thompson with Batty Corvette Repair. My name is Brian Thompson, and I founded the website Batty.com, where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.